So, good morning again. Uh, our lesson for today is all about exponential functions. So, ituloy lang natin yung study natin regarding functions. Tapos na tayo sa, ang huli natin na tackle ay rational functions at saka inverse functions or yung one-to-one -one functions. This time, we will be discussing exponential functions. Okay. Uh, ang exponential functions actually is very evident sa um, real-life situations. Maraming instances na nag occur or ginagamit ang exponential functions. Okay, one example is yung sa population growth. Kung paano dumadami ang tao or any living things that can multiply or that can reproduce. For example, yung bacteria. Uh, for example, meron tayong bacteria dito and then at the end of some time, for example, 100 hours, dodoble siya. And then after some time, another 100 hours, dodoble na naman yung bawat isa. So, magiging apat na sila. So, they double, sa, sa, sa madaling sabi, they, the bacteria doubles every 100 hours. So, we can continue tracking the number of bacteria hanggang sa dumami sila ng dumami. Okay. The growth of the bacteria is actually an example of exponential function. So, what is an exponential function? Ang isang exponential function ay merong uh, ganito ang itsura. So, meron tayong base B and the real number. F of X, function of X equals B raised to x or y equals b raised to x. So, medyo kakaiba ito dun sa mga na-discuss na nating functions dati na kung saan nasa baba lamang si x. This time, sa exponential function, kaya nga exponential exponent, yung variable natin na x, yung domain natin, ay nandun sa exponent. Yung b is any number na tinatawag nating base. So, it's basta't wag lamang mag-equal si B sa 1. So, B should not be equal to 1 and B should be greater than 0. Tinatawag natin yung exponential function. Okay. Uh, example tayo. I-complete daw natin yung table ng values for x negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3 for the given exponential function. So, basically, i-evaluate lang natin. No, evaluate din ng functions. I-substitute natin yung value, given values ni x sa taas from negative 3 to 3. And then, evaluate natin yung value ng mismong function natin. So, meron tayong tatlong function, all of which are exponential functions kasi as you can see, meron silang base, Okay, for the first um, function, ang base natin ay 1 third. The second function, ang base natin is 10. The third function is 0 0.8. Evaluate natin sila for the values of x na given. Ibig sabihin nun, isa substitute lang natin yung value ni x. So, we have 1 third raised to negative 3. 1 third raised to negative 3 is equal to 20. 7. So, um, mamaya, i-discuss ko kung paano ang mga, or I think meron na rin naman kayong idea, dun sa laws of exponent, pa ta paano tayo nag evaluate Yan. When x equals negative 2, evaluate lang natin, isa-substitute lang natin mismo yung value ni x na negative 2, dun sa mismong function. And we get 9. 9. Then, when x equals negative 1, we get 3. When x equals 0, we get 1. When x equals 1, I think, uh, alam nyo na kung anong mangyayari. So, when x equals 1, malamang 1 third. When x equals positive 2, 1 all over 9, 
and when x equals positive 3, 1 all over 27. So, the process is the same sa pangalawang function natin. 10 raised to negative 3 is what? 1 all over 1,000. 10 raised to negative 2 is 1 all over 100. 10 raised to negative 1 is 1 all over 10. 10 raised to 0 is 1. 10 raised to 1 is 10. 10 raised to 2 or 10 squared is 100. And 10 cubed or 10 raised to 3 is 1,000. Sir, pwede po yung decimal yung sagot. Okay lang din naman. So, I think you can, ano na. Para pong scientific notation. Uh, I think you can, uh, ano na, kaya nyo na itong pangatlong function, no? you just have to substitute. Ito kasing 0 0.8 raised to x, hindi yan exacto, so kailangan natin ng calculator dyan. But the process is the same. So, we have here another example. Kung yung function natin is f of x equals 3 raised to x, evaluate daw natin yung f of 2, f of negative 2, f of 1 half, and f of 0 0.4. The same sa example number 1, evaluate means isa-substitute lang natin yung nasa loob mismo ng f as a value of x. So, f of 2 means 3 squared. Pinalitan natin yung x ng 2. Kasi f of 2. And that means f of 2 is equal to 9 f of negative 2 is 3 raised to negative 2, or that is 1 all over 9. f of 1 half is 3 raised to 1 half, or that is equal to square root of 3. And f of 0 0.4 is equal to Ang 0 0.4, pwede nating i write as 4 all over 10, or that is the same as f lowest term to fifths. That is equal to 3 raised to 2 fifths, or it is the same as the fifth root of 3 squared, or the fifth root of 3 squared is... Nine. Nine. So, dahil sabi nga natin, very evident, sabi ko kanina, uh, maraming um, applications or real life instances kung saan na nakikita natin itong exponential functions. Let's try real life scenarios. So, kagaya nung kanina, solve natin yung sa bacteria. Let t, the time in hours, at t equal 0, so sa simula at the beginning, merong 20 na bacteria doon, sabi na natin nasa petri dish siya. And sabi na natin na nagmumultiply or nagdo-double, dumadami yung bacteria, it doubles every 100 hours. Ibig sabihin, after 100 hours, kung ilan man yung um, present at the moment na bacteria, magdo-double siya. Para silang mga anak. And then, kung ganoon, hanapin daw natin yung exponential model for the bacteria as a function of t, time t. Pag sinabi natin exponential model, hanapin natin yung function. So, na kung saan, paano nagbe-behave yung mga bacteria. So, isulat natin. At the beginning, initially, at time t equals 0, 20 yung bacteria. At time t equals 1, di ba, doble siya. So, 20, pagkatapos ng 100 hours, sorry, doble siya. So, 20 times 2. Pagkatapos ilit ng 200 hours, ano mangyayari? Yung 20 times 2, 
dodoble ulit. 20 times 2 times 2 ulit. So, that is equal to 20 times 2 squared. After 300 hours, or after another 100 hours, yung 20 times 2 times 2, madodoble ulit, another times 2. And then we get 20 times 2 raised to 3. So, we can continue no, hanggang sa kung ilang hours yan. Pero, anong napapansin natin? As we, as the time progresses, mapapansin natin na merong pattern. Merong model, kumbaga, na sinusundan yung mga bacteria. And ano yun? As you can see, kung ilan yung 100 hours na lumipas, yun din yung naging exponent ng ating um, nakamultiply na 2 dito. Siyempre, yung 20 times 2, 1 yung exponent niyan. No? Inuumit na lang natin kapag 1 yung exponent. Pero, for the sake of explanation, kung mapapansin nyo, kung ilang 100 hours yun, yun din yung exponent. No? Pwede mo yung ituloy ng ituloy and same lang yung susundin niya. Kasi ngayon nga yung model, yun yung function. So, if we could create an exponential model or a function, ang magiging function natin would be, as you can see, hindi na babago yung 20. So, laging nakamultiply yung initial number of bacteria. So, 20 times, ito na lang, uh, dot yung gamitin ko sa multiplication, times 2, saan kaya galing yung 2? Kasi ang sabi niya, doubles every 100 hours. So, yun yung 2. So, kung function pala tayo ng t, sorry, hindi f of x, f of t, i-multiply, uh, uh, i-raise natin si 2 ng t, pero i-divide natin yun ng 100. Kasi, di ba, kung t equals 100, 1 lang yung exponent ni 2. So, parang 100 divided by 100. 1. Kung t equals 200, ang exponent naman ng ating 2 ay 2. Kasi 200 divided by 100. So, for any time t, ang gagawin lang natin is i-divide natin siya ng 100. Para makuha yung exponent ni 2. Bakit kaya natin siya din i-divide ng 100? Kasi yun yung rate kumbaga. Kasi sabi niya, for every 100 hours, nudumodoble yung bakterya. So, eto na yung function natin. Eto na exponential model natin para dun sa bakterya. Ibig sabihin, pwede ko nang ma ma ma-predict kumbaga, kung ano man or ilan ang population ng bakterya, ilan ang bakterya na present at any time t. So, kahit Anong t ang ilagay natin dyan, isa-substitute lang natin dito sa model kasi makukuha na natin yung number of bacteria, f of t. Because this is our model. Ibig sabihin ng model, yun yung susundin ng bacteria kung gano'n siya kabilis dumami. We can actually generalize this kasi hindi naman pare-parehas no, yung rate ng of course, sa real, uh, real life situation, hindi pare-paras ang rate ng bacteria or yung population growth nila. So, we can uh, generalize this equation, this exponential model to be, as you can see, yung 20 nakamultiply na hindi nagbabago, that is the same number as yung initial number ng bacteria at time t equals 0. Sa umpisa, yun yung number of bacteria. So, kung sakaling maiba yung number ng bacteria, so, we can use constant na lang, y equals 0, to denote uh, the number of bacteria initially. And then, multiplied to 2 times t, any time t, function of t yung y natin, divided by malaking t, where t means yung rate kung gaano siya kabilis mag-doble. 
Kasi iba-iba yan. Pwedeng every 300 hours, every 200 hours. Depende. So, this is the general equation for population growth ng said uh, instances dito sa ating example. Y0 or Y0 is the initial big sabihin, number of bacteria at the beginning of time. Okay. Kung merong ano, meron pang ibang example, kung meron tayong examples ng dumadami or population growth na tinatawag, population growth, ginagamit din ang exponential model or exponential function para sa mga bagay na kumukonti naman, imbis dumadami, na tinatawag natin yon exponential decay. Kabalik taran naman ito, imbis na dumami sila, lumiliit. Okay? Uh, very common example dito is yung sa radioactive materials. Na kung saan, meron tayong tinatawag na half-life. No? Anong ibig sabihin ng half-life? Ito yung time or kung ganong katagal bago mga lahate or maging kalahate yung amount ng radioactive material or substance na present. Yun yung ibig sabihin ng half-life. So, for example, kung meron akong, half, uh, meron akong isang radioactive material, yan, tapos ang half-life niya ay 5 uh, days. Ibig sabihin, kung meron akong 100 grams initially, after 5 days, meron na lang akong 50 grams. After 5 days, meron na lang akong 25. After 5 days, 12.5. Ganon. Kaya siya tinawag na half-life kasi nakakalahate siya from the word half itself. So, dito sa example natin, meron daw half-life ang certain radioactive substance na 10 days. Initially, there are 10 grams. Ano daw yung amount ng substance na matitira after 30 days? So, i-plot natin ng maayos. So, when t equals 0 days, so, initially, 10 grams. After 10 days, kalahati na lang kasi 10 days nga yung half-life. Ibig sabihin ko konti siya. No, kabalik na siya ng population growth na dadami. Sa exponential decay, ko konti siya. Mababawasan. So, after 10 days, dahil 10 days ang kanyang half-life, kalahati na lang ng 10 grams ang present, which is 5 grams nag-decay na, na nagkaroon na ng radio, radioactive decay sa kalahate na nawala. After again, another 10 days, which is at time t equals 20 days, kalahati na lang din ulit na matira. Kalahati ng 5 is 2.5 grams. Another, 30, uh, another 10 days, or at time t equals 30 days, kalahati ng 2.5, 1.25 grams. So, exactly after 30 days, the amount of substances remaining is 125 grams na lang. Kung lalagyan natin ito ng model, kagaya ng ginawa natin kanina, kung bibigyan natin siya ng function, no, kamukhang-kamukha lang din ng um, example number 1. Magkaiba lang sila ng rate. So, if gagawin natin ito ng function, ganun pa rin, 10 grams, ito yung initial na amount at time t equals 0, multiplied to, pero this time, imbis na times 2, kagaya nitong uh, example natin, diba, naka times 2, raised to t all over 100, kasi dumodoble, yun yung example number 3. Pero dito, sa example 4, dahil half-life, ang multiply natin ay 1 half. Kasi nakakalahati siya. Hindi siya na dumundoble. Nakakalahati siya. Every 10 days. At dahil every 10 days, yung rate or yung half-life, T divided by 10 naman, yung magiging exponent ng 1 half natin. 
yan po yung model or exponential function or model para dito sa example number 4. Okay, actually, ang sagot dito, ang hinahanap lang is determine the amount of substance remaining after 30 days. Ang, ang sagot lang is ito, 125 grams. Kasi yun lang yung hinahanap. Pero kung gusto lang natin, um, nagyan din ng model, kagaya nung example number 3, eto naman yung function niya. Hindi naman siya hinahanap. Sure. Uh, dinagdag ko lang. Um, bukod sa exponential decay at saka population growth, meron din, uh, ginagamit din ang... Um, Exponential function sa compound dead interests. Kung paano lumalaki yung pera natin sa banko using compound interest. For example dito, si Mrs. De La Cruz daw, nag-invest siya ng 100,000 sa kumpanya na nag-offer ng 6% interest compounded annually. Annually means every year. So every year, kumikita yung pera niya ng 6%. 6% nung current amount. Tumutubo ng 6%. Magkano daw, or ilan na daw yung pera ni Miss, Mrs. De La Cruz at the end of each year for the next 5 years. So, ilista daw natin ilan yung pera ni uh, Mrs. De La Cruz every 5 years. So, umpisa natin, when t equals 0, syempre, kakahulog pa lang yung pera. Wala pang interest yun, tama? Yan, for example, ngayon pa lang siya nag- Kulog. After one year, dahil compounded annually, every year yung interest rate niya, madadagdagan ngayon, manganganak ngayon yung pera niya. Okay, gano'ng kalaki? Imumultiply natin siya ng 1.06. Bakit 1.06 yung imultiply? Uh, it is the same as yung original na pera niya plus yung interest. Paano ba kinukuha yung interest? Imumultiply mo yung interest rate. ba? Ito yung original pera, ito yung tubo. Or yung interest na nakuha ni Mrs. De La Cruz. And that is the same as kung ifa-factor out mo si 100,000, magkakaroon ka ng 1 plus 0 0.6 or that is the same as 1.06 that is after 1 year ilan ito? ilan ang 6%? 6,000 so 106,000 tama ba? 106,000 yung pera niya after 1 year ok then syempre sabi niya kasi 5 years no pagpasok ng um, susunod na taon yung 106,000 yun na yung current amount niya so yung 106,000 na yun after the second year yun na ulit yung imumultiply natin ng another 1.06 kasi pag natapos niya yung 2 years magkakaroon magkakaroon ulit yun ng interest na 6%. So, that is at the end of the second year, ang kanyang pera ay 112,360. 5 years yung sinabi, no? So, after the third year, yung 112,000 na yun, yun yung current amount niya, or current na pera, imumultiply ulit natin ng 1.06. That is 119,101.6. Ganun ulit. 4 year, at time t equals 4 year, imumultiply natin yung 119,101.6 ng 1.06 ay sorry multiplied by 1.06 1,000 ay 126,000 247.696 and then 5 years t equals 5 years 
plus na 126,247.696 multiply natin ng 1.06 ang makukuha natin ay 133,822.5578 ayan So, yan na yung pera ni Mrs. De La Cruz after 5 years. 133,822.5578 Yan na yung final answer natin. Kung gusto mong i-model, for example, para makuha mo yung pera ni Mrs. De La Cruz at any time T. So, titignan mo lang yung ating Yung amount ng pera ni Mrs. De La Cruz at any time T is equal to yung principal amount or kung ilan yung dina, uh, tawag dito ilan yung dineposit niya or invest niya initially at time T equal 0 times 1 plus yung rate kasi tingnan nyo 1 plus ang lagi nating minumultiply is 1.06 that is 1 plus yung rate na 6% so, if we want to generalize this, yung formula for compound interest would be amount is equal to P times 1 plus the rate raised to time. Time in years. No? Of course, given na annually yung compound, uh, compound mode ng ating compound interest. Yan. Ito yung magiging model ng compound interest. Again, A is the amount at any time T. P is the principal money or ilan yung hinulog niya initially times 1 plus R is the rate of interest annually and T is the time in years. Pero hindi ko get yung pagkawa ng model. Nalito po ako talaga. Yun dun sa ating exponential function, kagaya ng kanina, f of x equals b raised to x, where b should not be equal to 1. Bakit kaya? Kasi kung 1 yung b natin, 1 raised to x, kahit anong domain natin, kahit anong value ng x, eh 1 yung base natin, 1 lang din yung lalabas, so hindi siya kasama. No. And b is greater than or uh, greater than 0. Um, there is a certain constant or ginagamit na base which is called the E. E stands for Euler's number na very naturally occurring sa nature naturally occurring sa nature na very evident sa nature kapag yung base natin is Euler's number, ang tawag po natin dun sa exponential function is natural exponential function. Okay? Conversely, pwede natin din sabihin na ang natural exponential function is a type of exponential function, special type siya, na kung saan yung base natin ay equal sa Euler's number. Ano yung Euler's number? Ito po, yung naka-flash po sa screen natin. 2.718281828459245236328747 and so on. Irrational. Same memory. Hindi. Ah, uh, nasa calculator 'yan, sa scientific calculator, pero usually uh dahil irrational number nga 'yan, no, we cannot express that in uh as a simple fraction we can approximate that as 2.72 na lang up to uh, 2 decimal places or 718 if you want up to 3 decimal places hindi natin kailangan memory so kasi parang pi ito na million din ang digits okay ulitin po natin kapag yung exponential function natin yung base niya is e 
or the Euler's number. Euler's po ang basa dito, no? Hindi Euler's. Euler's. Ganyan po ang basa. Euler's number na E. Ang tawag po natin dun sa uh, function na yun or exponential function na yun is natural number. Wala kasi ako narating example pero ginagamit siya dun sa compound interest kapag ang compound mode of compound niya is ano, up to infinity or tinatawag nilang perpetuity kapag up to infinity siya kinompound E ang gagamitin na base Okay Anyway, moving on Kagaya ng uh, ibang functions, kagaya ng rational, ng inverse function, ganun, uh, algebraic functions, meron din tayong exponential equations and inequalities. And para masolve itong mga exponential equations and inequalities, kailangan nating i-define itong mga theorems na to. So kapag meron tayong uh, any number a which is not equal to zero, a raised to 0 ay laging equal sa 1. Tandaan po natin yan. Any number other than 0, kapag ang exponent ay 0, equal po sa 1. Pangalawang definition, kapag si Ray ay niya raised sa negative 1, uh, negative n, this is the same as 1 all over A raised to n or naka-reciprocate siya. Okay. Magiging positive na yung exponent ni n pero naka 1 all over siya or naka reciprocate. Um, this is dun sa tanong kanina na kung pwede bang yung dun sa half life, kung pwede bang imbis na 1 half raised to t all over 10, pwede bang t uh, 10 divided by 2 raised to 2t all over 10. Yes, parehas po ito. No? Bakit? Okay, kapag in-apply po natin yung second definition natin, pwede nating iangat si 2 dito sa baba. Pero magiging negative siya. So, magiging... 10 times 2 raised to negative of t all over 10. Using this definition, di ba? Kung negative siya, pwede mo siyang ibaba. And conversely, kung nasa baba siya, pwede mo siyang iangat, pero magiging negative na yung kanyang exponent. Kagaya nga nito, nasa baba siya, pero nung inangat natin, nilagyan natin ng negative. Itong nasa unahan, yung 1 half, pwede mo ring iangat yung 2. Diba, originally, yung 1 all over 2, this is the same as 1 all over 2 raised to 1. No, inuumit lang natin pag exponent is 1. Okay, pero alam natin na meron niya exponent na 1. At kapag inangat natin yan, magiging negative, dahil nasa baba siya, magiging negative 1. So, parehas lang ito sa 10, times 2 raised to negative 1 times t all over 10 or 10 times 2 raised to negative t all over 10. Kaya kanina, sinabi ko na dun sa tanong niya, pwedeng nakadivide or pwedeng nakamultiply. Parehas lang yung ibig sabihin because of this definition. Bukod dito sa mga definition na to, meron din tayong iba't ibang rules which is, I think, alam nyo na, yung mga rules of exponent, kasi yung exponential function to. So, meron tayong mga tinatawag na rules of exponent, kagaya ng mga to, na pwede nating apply para masolve natin ang exponential functions. Okay, number one is the multiplication rule. Ibig sabihin, kung meron po tayong dalawang exponential functions or expressions, sorry, na parehas ang base tapos nakamultiply sila 
pwede po nating pagsamahin sa isang base yung dalawang yun and then i-add na lang natin yung kanilang mga exponents. This is the multiplication rule na tinatawag. Pag nakamultiply ang dalawang uh, exponential expression na parehas ang base, okay? Pwede lang natin gamitin to kapag parehas ang base. Kung hindi po parehas ang base, hindi natin pwedeng pagsamahin yung exponent. Okay? Kung multiplication, addition yung, ia-add natin yung exponents. Addition ang operation ng exponents. Dito sa number 2, ito yung division. Kapag nakadivide naman, same base pa rin, requirement yon na same base, dapat, pwede natin silang pagsamahin sa isang base, pero this time, subtraction naman. So, sa multiplication, addition ng exponents, sa division, subtraction ng exponents. Again, parehas silang required na dapat same base. Hindi pwede pagsamahin pag hindi parehas ang base. Third is what we call the power of a power. Kasi yung power nagkaroon pa ulit ng power. Diba? Kagaya nito, a raised to r, so meron siyang power na r. Tapos, parenthesis, meron pa ulit siyang exponent na s, power of a power. Pag ganito, imumultiply lang natin yung exponents nila. So, a raised to r times s. Pang-apat na theorem is yung power of a product. Kung meron tayong product a times b na nakaraise, sa isang exponent or power na R, pwede po natin silang paghiwalayin at same sila ng power na R. Tig isa sila. Or conversely, pwedeng kabaliktaran. Kung meron kang uh, dalawang uh, product or kung meron kang product na same ang exponent, pwede mo silang pagsamahin sa isang product AB raised to a common exponent. Yun yung tinatawag nating power of a product. Yung panglima, meron po tayong tinatawag na power of a fraction. So, kung meron tayong fraction, a all over b, na nakaraise into sa certain power r, pwede po nating paghiwalayin yung dalawang yan, take isa sila ng power or exponent na r, pero nakadivide pa rin silang dalawa. a raised to r, divided by b raised to r. So, ito po yung mga um, rules. Exponent, loss of exponent or rules of exponent na pwede natin gamitin para mag-solve ng exponential equations and inequalities. We have the multiplication rule, the division rule, power of a power, power of a product, and power of a function. So, gamitin natin itong mga to. Okay. Ah, meron pa akong example para dito. Which of the following are exponential functions? So, para maging exponential function siya, tandaan natin, si x dapat ang nasa exponent. So, saan dyan? Si a. Exponential function to. Kasi si x nasa exponent ni 7. Si b ay hindi exponential function, that is an algebraic function, or 7, kasi hindi naman exponent sa x, diba? Nakamultiply lang siya sa 2. Si c ay exponential function, yes. Si nasa exponent po yung x. Si d, exponential function. Si e, hindi po, although may x siya, pero hindi naman nasa exponent. Si f, hindi rin po, no, polynomial function po yan. Si G, hindi po. Si H, ay exponential inequality. No, kasi si X, nasa taas. Ganun lang mag-determine kung exponential ba o hindi. Tignan mo lang kung yung variable na X, yung domain, ay nandoon sa may exponent. Yan. Sir, pwede po eh. So, example 2, solve the equation for raised to x minus 1 equals 16. 
ang una mong gagawin at iisipin para ma-solve itong example is dapat same sila ng base as much as possible. Actually, hindi as much as possible. Requirement talaga. So, copyin ko lang. 4 raised to x minus 1 equals 16. Kung gagawin kong parehas na base, hindi ko nagagalawin yung 4x raised to x minus 1. Kasi si 16 ay pwede kong express as 4 squared. Tama? Ngayon, kapag napagparehas mo na yung base, yung both sides of the exponential equation, by inspection na lang, i-compare mo na lang yung exponent. Dahil parehas naman yung base, kopyahin mo na lang yung exponent niya. x minus 1, dapat parehas sila sa 2. No? Kasi meron tayong tinatawag na 1 to 1 property ng exponent. Kung meron kang dalawang number, for example, b1 equals uh, b1 equal x1 tapos meron kang b raised to x2, same ang base, okay? mag equal lang ang b raised to x1 sa b raised to x2 kung mismong exponent nila ay equal din. Ito yung tinatawag na 1 to 1 property ng exponential function. So, dito, kung equal yung base, at dahil equality to, mag equal ang left and right side ng equation kung dapat parehas din or mag equal din yung kanilang exponent. So, solve for x. Equate natin. Dahil same na sila ng base, x minus 1 equals 2. Very basic, i-transpose mo lang si negative 1, positive 1, and then x equals 2 plus 1 is 3. Yun na yung sagot. Yan. Pag sinabi niyang solve the equation na ganyan, ang ibig sabihin niyan, kukunin mo yung value ni x. So, ang value ni x ay 3. Kung gusto mong i-check, i-substitute mo. So, 4 raised to x minus 1 is 16. Ang nakuha mong value ni x is 3. So, 4 raised to 3 minus 1 equals 16. 3 minus 1 is 2. 4 squared is 16. So, parehas. Naprove mo. Na-check mo. So, tama yung sagot mo na x equals 3. So, ito. Pangalawang, ay pangatlong sample para mas ma -gets. So, 125. Ang 125 raised to x minus 1 daw ay equal sa 25 x plus 3. Okay, hindi tayo pwedeng magdiretso na x minus 1 equals x plus 3. Kasi hindi pa parehas yung base. No, hindi natin pwedeng ma-apply yung property na to na ini-equate yung exponent kung hindi pa natin napagparehas yung base. So, kailangan muna natin silang, kailangan parehas muna sila ng base. Eh, ano ba ang 125? Ang 125 ay 5 cube. Tama? 5 times 5 times 5. So, pwede mo siyang i-rewrite. 5 cube raised to x minus 1 equals yung, 5, yung 25 ay 5 squared. 5 times 5. So, palitan mo si 25 ng 5 squared raised to x plus 3. I-apply natin yung Loss of exponent, ano to? Power of a power. Ibig sabihin, kung meron ng power, tapos meron pa ulit, ni-raise pa ulit, nagkaroon pa ulit ng power sa labas, ang gagawin lang natin, imumultiply na lang natin yung exponent. So, ibig sabihin, si 3, didistribute ko lang to. 3x, tapos, minus 3. Equals, 5. Ganon din ang gagawin ko dun sa 2 raised to x plus 3, i-distribute ko lang si 2. So, 2x, tapos 2 times 3, positive 6. Ayun. Parehas na ba sila ng base? Yes, parehas na silang 5. Kapag parehas na silang 5, dun ka na tumbingin sa exponents nila. I-equate mo na ngayon yung mga exponent nila. Ayan. And then, pag na-equate mo, solve for x. So, transpose mo lang si 
2x dun sa right, papuntang left, so magiging negative. And then, yung negative 3 naman is inilipat mo sa right, magiging positive. So, 3x minus 2x, so we have x equals 6 plus 3, 9. So, yun na yung solution. x equals 9. Example number 4, kunin daw natin yung equation, or solve the equation 9x squared equals 3x plus 3. Okay, i-rewrite ko lang siya dito banda. 9x, 9 raised to x squared. So, ang buong exponent niya is x squared. Equals 3 raised to x plus 3. Para mag-equal, same dapat ng base. Hindi sila same ng base. As you can see, base ng nasa left ay 9, ng nasa right 3. So, hindi pwede nyo kaagad-agad equate yung exponent. Palitan muna natin yung 9. Ano ba ang 9 in terms of 3? That is 3 squared. 3 squared. squared. So, palitan natin yung 9 ng 3 squared. Tapos, naka-exponent pa ulit ng x raised to 2 or x squared. Rule number 3 ulit, power of a power, multiply lang natin siya. So, 2 raised to x, uh, 2 times x squared equals 3 raised to x plus 3. Same na ng base. Same na ng base 3. So, doon na tayo sa exponent. Kopyahin mo exponent, 2x squared. Equate mo doon sa exponent ng kabila, x plus 3. Then, solve for x. So, lipat lang natin si x magiging negative x. Si 3 magiging negative 3. So, quadratic equation to. Pwede natin gamitin yung quadratic formula. Or kung gusto mo, pwede rin namang i-factor. Napa-factor ba ito? Yes, napa-factor. Factor natin. 2x saka x. Tapos, negative 3. So, minus 3 plus 1 equals 0. Tama ba? Tama. Okay. So, ang value ng x natin is 2x 2x minus 3 equals 0 2x equals positive 3 Transpose natin yung negative 3 Divide lang to both sides So, 3 all over 2 Or 1.5 And then, yung kabila naman x plus 1 equals 0, x equals negative 1, or x equals negative 1. So, dalawa yung values ni x. Hindi natin alam kung parehas ba na tama yung dalawa, kaya kailangan natin i-check. So, when x equals 1.5, 9 raised to 1.5 squared, is equal to 3 raised to 1.5 plus 3. That is 9 raised to... Ang 1.5 squared ay 2.25. 1 point... Ayan. 5 plus 3 is 4.5. So, check mo using calculator kasi decimal yung exponent niyan. Ang 9 raised to 2.25 ay 140.296 up to 3 decimal places. Ang 3 raised to 4.5 ay 140.296. So, ibig sabihin, tama. Um, isang solution yung x raised to 1.5. How about yung isa? Try din natin. So, substitute lang din ulit natin. 9 raised to negative 1 squared equals 3 raised to negative 1 plus 3. Ang negative 1 squared ay positive 1. So, 9 raised to 1 equals 3 raised to negative 1 plus 3 is positive 2. 9 raised to 1 is 9 and 3 squared is also 9. So, 9 equals 9. Tama naman. So, kahit yung x equals negative 1, pasok din. So, dalawa yung sagot natin. 1.5 at saka 
x equals negative one. 